Here in Australia, our government has just announced they're going to spend $1.1 billion on synthetic fuels. Now, the government believes that we're going to run our trucks and our, and our heavy vehicles, even potentially our aeroplanes, on vegetable oils. Vegetable oils. Instead of going electric, we'll use vegetable oils instead to make synthetic fuels, which currently cost seven times more than gasoline or diesel. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. This is a, a very bizarre story. Here's what the media are saying. And I, I mean, this is not what I think. I mean, I don't agree. I think this is nonsensical, but here's what they're saying. A brave new world where planes and trucks are fueled with low carbon liquid fuel made from Australian canola oil is the centerpiece of the Albanese government's blockbuster new investment in tackling climate change. This is the solution, they say. The Albanese government, or the Australian government, will announce on Wednesday it is investing $1.1 billion to help unlock economic opportunities on offer from low-carbon liquid fuels. Treasurer Jim Chalmers said the liquid fuels investment aimed to deliver sustainable fuels that can power our trucks, our cargo ships, and our planes into the future. I don't know about you guys, but um, I've seen a fair few electric trucks, and I think they're a lot more viable than a truck running on vegetable oils. The global net zero transformation is an enormous economic opportunity for Australia, and producing low carbon liquid fuels is an important part of that opportunity, he told news.com.au. Becoming a world leading producer of low carbon liquid fuels is a really big chance for Australia to be a real be part of a really important growing global supply chain. Now, I should point out, in terms of the global supply chain, there isn't really one at the moment. Uh, Porsche, the Volkswagen Group, basically really just Porsche, they, they're making uh, low-carbon synthetic fuels, I believe, in Chile, down there. But they do cost seven times more. The fuel costs seven times more than the current average price for diesel and gasoline. Very expensive. So if you're driving a truck on this fuel, you're going to be looking at a, a massive bill. I mean, I don't think that um, companies would be able to absorb this kind of cost. Now, even if, let's assume that they can somehow reduce that cost from seven times more down to five times more, that is still crazy expensive and much more expensive than electricity than simply running trucks as electric trucks. Anyhow, getting back to the story, the big announcement follows the release of Australia's first national climate risk assessment, outlining grim predictions of cascading, compounding, and concurrent risks, including rising sea levels, floods, cyclones, heat waves, droughts, and bushfires. Now, right out front of my house, I'm close to the beach. The beach is getting deteriorated constantly, and it's massive erosion happening because of um, these rising seawaters. The assessment will inform the government's new national emissions reduction target for 2035 that is going to be debated by the cabinet. Acting Minister for Infrastructure, Transport, Regional Development and Local Government Murray Watt said the liquid fuels reforms will create jobs in Australia. Low carbon fuels have the potential to be a $36 billion industry here in Australia and we have the opportunity to lead the way in the production of these new fuels. $36 billion industry here in Australia to make um, gasoline out of vegetable oil. What do you guys think? Do you think this is legit? We have renewable feedstocks, he said, access to clean energy and a strong agriculture base, all of which will allow us to develop this new industry, create new jobs, and power how Australians move for decades to come. The new 10-year cleaner fuels program aims to stimulate private investment in Australian onshore production of low-carbon liquid fuels, such as so-called renewable diesel, which is not renewable at all, and sustainable aviation fuel, which is not sustainable either. But the first production of drop-in cleaner fuels, which can be directly substituted for existing fuels and work in today's engines, won't actually start until 2029. 
The Albanese government argues that Australia has the ingredients needed to make cleaner liquid fuels to fossil fuels with ready access to feedstocks like canola, sorghum, sugar, and waste. Liquid fuels currently make up around half of Australia's national energy use, and replacing those fossil fuels with cleaner alternatives could deliver big gains, says the government. The Clean Energy Finance Corporation estimates an Australian low-carbon liquid fuel industry could be worth $36 billion by 2050. In other words, they're saying by 2050, um, trucks, large, large, basically large transportation, planes, uh, ferries, boats, instead of being electric and using batteries, which will come down in cost by a factor of an, probably an additional 90%, uh, the cost of batteries by 2050 will be probably around about, experts say, probably about $10 per kilowatt hour for sodium ion batteries, which will be advanced. The energy density will probably double what they are today by 2050. We're talking 24 years into the future. But instead of that, which would be far cheaper, the government is saying, no, 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 Australians will continue to drive trucks, but they'll be paying a premium to do so using canola oil. I, don't, I think this is wild. I think it just is absolutely nonsensical. Climate change and energy minister Chris Bowen considered this week that many Australians will find the warnings of floods, cyclones, bushfires and deaths in, in the climate report confronting. Many Australians will find this report confronting. I don't think many Australians would be particularly surprised that climate change is and will have an impact on Australia. The report makes clear that insurance will become increasingly a challenge, both in terms of affordability and availability, and that will have flow-on effects. Here's the thing. The report said that a projected increase in heat-related deaths will happen in Sydney, Melbourne, Perth, Townsville, and Darwin. For example, in Sydney, heat-related deaths will increase by 100% under a projected increase in temperatures of 1.5 degrees Celsius. If temperatures rise by 3 degrees Celsius, those death projections could rise by up to 450%. The national assessment considers different global warming levels that are likely to be reached by 2050 and long-term by 2090 and are based on increases in temperatures of 1.5, 2 degrees and 3, 3 degrees Celsius respectively. But the most sobering predictions relate to the mortality risk from heat waves if the world fails to act contributing to up to 355 excess deaths in Melbourne alone. So the report is, I think it's the climate change report is a good one. But this idea that in 2050, Australia will have a $36 billion uh, industry selling canola oil to be used in trucks and airplanes, in my opinion, is so far-fetched, it's like a Disney fantasy. But hey, I could be wrong. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments and thank you for watching.